Good morning. God is good, worthy to be praised. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm rejoicing and I'm glad in it. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. I want to continue to talk about some subject matters I've been teaching and equipping the saints over the past <clears throat> two weeks. And still talking about the misconception of God. And the subtopic is the secret place. God bless you, Sister Linda. And I want to train and equip the saints on this same subject matter. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to show you this and continue to teach this and continue to focus on this. It's important to understand this. It's called the secret place. And I've been talking about the misconception of the Gospel of John chapter uh, 12 and 13, 14, 15, 16. And of course you have the uh, unity prayer that Jesus prays in John 17. Now, before I give you the subtopic, well the subtopic, sub, subtopic is the secret place. But I want to show you some things I thought was pretty powerful that I heard at the seven last sayings yesterday between uh, giving an honor to Jesus Christ, my Savior. And I want to thank God for all of them that participated yesterday. Reverend Janine, Pastor, Dr. Janine, Sister Linda, I am so grateful uh, of KOM. I'm grateful for our student body of our sons and our daughters. It is a grateful thing to focus on Christ Jesus and the kingdom. It is a great, beautiful feeling. And I was so excited for these seven that ministered on yesterday. And I just give a big shout out to uh, Minister Daniel Johnson, uh, Pastor Daniel Mitchell, Pastor Sharon Huntley Houston, uh, to uh, Pastor Doctor, no, Pastor Reverend uh, David George Riley Jr., the son of uh, Pastor George Riley, and also the son of uh, spiritual son of Pastor Randall Lassner. Of course, it was mom, Mrs. Riley, his sister, Tabitha. Uh, and then, of course, my beautiful wife came up and shared, oh, my God, what a teacher and preacher, uh, to uh, Reverend George Riley Sr., who was a man above all men in terms of revelation knowledge, and to uh, Charette, who I was just so blown away by Charette. And I was so proud of all seven of you. I'm telling you, man, it feels good to watch KOM release sons and daughters and have an influence. And I don't have to be someone's pastor to help train and equip them. And uh, that's great to know that uh, Pastor Lassiter trusted me with Reverend David Riley. It's, man, I like to hang out with pastors and leaders who are not competing, man. I can network. And I met a pastor yesterday, Pastor Daniel. Love him, man. United Presbyterian Church. Country man. Down home man. And uh, there's no competition in him. He said, Mike, whoever you are, let's roll. And I love people like this this season. When you get people wanting to do some work, man, and focus on the mission, that's a powerful thing, man. And I want to thank God for all of you. And to our eighth speaker, Sister Linda. Linda was the eighth speaker. <laughs> and I'll tell you how I handed the mic over to Linda, Reverend Janine, Dr. Janine, and Reverend David Riley. What Linda did yesterday, I was going to do. I was going to come down and sum up all seven words. And when I got to the floor, God said, hand Linda the mic. <laughs> That's why when Linda stood up, uh, I knew it was God. I knew it, I knew it would go overtime. I knew, you know, uh, people say, ah, it's too long. I know, I already know that. That's how it goes for these programs. Well, whatever it is, I'm so glad that Linda obeyed God. Because when Linda do certain stuff, I know when it's her and I know when it's God making her do something. That's how I know my people. And uh, I know how to deal with people according to their temperament and what they need. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. A real pastor leader knows what each congregant need. Knows when to be spanked, knows when to be ignored, knows when to compliment, knows when to pull back, knows when to press in. That's the gift of being a pastor and a leader. You can't punk. You gotta know when to be tough, you gotta know when to be sweet. You gotta know some time when to push the envelope. We pushed the album yesterday. We were there from 11 o'clock to close to 2.30, maybe, right? 12, 1, 2, about three and a half hours. But it was worth it. It was worth it. <coughs> and I was so impressed with uh, Charette. Uh, Reverend and Pastor Jordan Riley Sr. To, uh, of course,
course, uh, my wife, uh, Pastor David Riley Jr. I want you to know that I went back to Pastor Lazarus and bragged about uh, David again. He talked about uh, the plea deal. And I heard from his father, but after the plea deal, now what? Gotta get something finished. And uh, I tell you, it was an awesome thing to watch God use all eight of the speakers, including the bonus, Sister Linda. And I want to shout out all eight of you. Thank you for being obedient. And to the church, United Presbyterian Church, to Sean, who I call 81. They fixed some beautiful soup afterwards. And I took me a couple of uh, cups of that soup home, man. I, that soup was some good soup. They got a, they got a, they got a package of that soup and sell that soup. That soup was nice. And to Charette's family, they came out. It's funny. <coughs> All of y'all. <coughs> Shouldn't do that. It's bad to slam your voice like that. Please forgive me. Um, there were two young ladies in the program yesterday. I didn't know who they were until they took their mask off. There was Charette's daughter and Reverend George's daughter. Senior, you know, and I, I was so shocked by they were there at the program, and I couldn't see them because they was behind a secret mask. I didn't recognize them; they were in secret. It was hidden. It was there, but it was hidden. Now that prepares me for my message today. Here, as I teach this as I head towards my first destination, the secret place. Now, right now, we're on Saturday. And this is the in-between stage between the death of Christ. He died at 3 o'clock, supposedly. And some stuff was transpiring between 3 o'clock on Friday through today, which is Saturday. And then, of course, on early Sunday morning, Jesus gets up. Now, we spoke about some things that Jesus said on the cross yesterday, the seven last sayings. And, uh, Reverend George Riley said that when Jesus says it was finished, what part was finished? And I want to make it pretty clear to what I believe, what was the part that was finished. The finish was that Jesus did everything he was supposed to do up to that point. Okay, because all he had to say after that was, into your hands I commend my spirit, which is like a prayer, a release, which Charette talked about. Some of us need to release our spirit and stop fighting God and do what God called us to do. And Charette closed up so sweet. You know, I mean, what a, what a smart woman of God. What a smart woman. She understood that the people had endured, you know, six speakers. And she came up and used her time so wisely. What a wise woman. And big ups to Charette. And I remember Linda prophesied to Daniel. She had the hardest one because the whole Bible was placed in her hand. Because when you deal with forgiveness, that's the whole Bible. Boy. I tell you, I was so proud of all of them yesterday. And uh, I was so uh, uh, just overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with what God did yesterday. And then to watch my mom and one of my second mothers come out. And uh, both of these women are uh, pushing 90 years old. And they came out to celebrate. And to the leadership at the United Presbyterian Church, not just Sean 81, but to the pastors, ministers, and the women that fixed the soup. Man, it felt good, Minister DJ, to uh, network with people who have no agenda. I mean, just sweet people. They just want to do what God says, man. It, it is such a peaceful feeling, man. I tell you. Subtopic, the secret place. In John 14, verse 2, we've had a misconception that Jesus was going to heaven to take us away from here as I've heard many people teach and preach but I came on to give you a different perspective of John 14 verse 2 where it says in my father's house are many mansions and the word mansion there is the Greek word moni m-o-n-e which really means in my father's house are many rooms or many dwelling places when we used to have a church on Durham Avenue in Patterson uh we had close to over 23 rooms in this mansion. And we have four floors, basement first and second floor. And I think it was the third floor, if I'm correct or not, basement, right? First floor, yep, and then second, we had three floors. Well, basement, first floor, so we actually had four floors. And there were over 20 some rooms. And one of the rooms we had service and the other rooms we lived in. And we used our mansion of might to minister to people. 
and uh, but every room that's in our mansion had a certain position. There was a kitchen, there was a bathroom, there was the living room, there was the nook, and oh, okay, we ate our food at. There was a, a TV room, there was a dining room, I had my office. Every room was a place you can dwell in and it's set up strategically and positionally inside the mansion. And then when you went outside, before you came in, that was the outside. It was like coming into the gates with thanksgiving. And so when you speak to Jesus about certain subject matters, when you, when you meet with Jesus in certain subject matters, he always speaks in Jewish terms. He speaks in terms of training you and equipping you based on the mindset that's already inside of you. So when Jesus uh, deals with the Jews at the Last Supper, he already know they already have a certain mindset. So when Jesus says certain words, he's expecting them to become aware of it. Now this is a difficult part for us as believers because we be thinking that the Bible is an American book when it is an Eastern book that needs an Eastern mind to interpret it. So when you study the word of God, you gotta always go back and get the textual, the Jewish contextual background, the Jewish contextual background, the Jewish contextual background. And when you get that background, you're able to understand what the speakers are trying to communicate or what the speakers are trying to say. So when you hear words like it is finished, you know, I thirst, I know we try to interpret those words by being an American believer, but you got to go back and do the Jewish background. And you got to look up certain terms in terms of the law, uh, the court system. And you got to learn these things because it's going to give you a better awareness of the scriptures so you don't be teaching in error. So in John chapter 14, verse 2, this is the subchapter, sub the subtopic is the secret place. And we still talk about the misconceptions of God. And I'm trying to show you that when Jesus talks about going to prepare a place for you, I believe you're preparing a secret place inside of a house that we can dwell in that turns it into a home. It is a strategic place that's made available to the body of Christ. All Old Testament patriarchs and prophets visit this place and knew something of it, but didn't have the right to dwell there permanently. Moses writes about this in Psalms 90 uh, and 91. We know Psalms 91. I've been telling you about Psalms 91 over the last few days because ever since the demons jumped in that man in New York and there has been rage devils, uh, satanic bullying spirits, and you have to know how to decapitate those devils, all right? You have to know how to cut them off in the secret realm, or you got to know how to go behind the scene and decapitate devils. You have to speak to storms and tell them to shut up and speak to bullying spirits. You have to know how to talk back to thoughts that don't come from you. And I've been training many of you how to do this. Thank God for those who heeded instructions and I watch God move. But here's the point I'm making. When I operate in this place, Daryl Jacobs, in the power of the kingdom, that man was exposed. Thank you, Sister Les. That man was exposed in New York. He was shut down. And here's the crazy thing. He actually called the cops on himself. That is what was alleged. So it's almost like I did that to get attention so I can get arrested and become some type of historical piece. Sometimes folk will uh, do these things for attention and just to be a part of historic history. I want to make the newspapers. I want to be on the front page of a book. And you never know what people does. But, uh, the guy had some uh, YouTube sites. Watch, 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 hear it again on YouTube, blasting his ignorance. And that helped lead to his arrest. But now he's a historical figure now. Now he gets his attention. He has a greater way to get God's attention. Practice the secret place. Practice dwelling in God's presence. This is the greatest place to be. Uh, Pastor David Riley, I thought it was amazing that Jesus used the word place. I go to prepare a place for you. And in Psalms 91, it says, he that dwells in the secret place. So I'm going to take Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2, and put that right next to John 14, verse 2. All right? And then if you jump down a little further, we don't, well, we don't jump down. Let's deal with this one. You deal with uh, Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2, and you 
deal with uh, John 14, verse 2, the word that jumps out is place. David Ray, God bless you. I got, bunch, I got a bunch of Davids and Daniels. All day, I got a David and Daniel, a Daniel and a David. I'm going to be praying for Davids today. Davids and Daniels. Because I believe God is going to about to deliver y'all from the trap of the lion's den. And I've been singing this song for the last three days. God made it fail. And I've been dedicating these broadcasts to about four families who have experienced uh, departure of loved ones. And they've been struggling. And I've been praying for you and lifting you up. I've been coaching some of you, giving you instruction what to do in terms of using Psalms 91, Psalms 27, Psalms 23. And I've been showing you offline how to operate secretly. I've been showing you how not to go on Facebook and how to operate behind the scenes and decapitate devils. And I want you to learn these instructions. Now, this is very important to watch how God operates. If you're dealing with the secret place and David Ray, this is so powerful. Jesus is about to do something in the secret so he can permanently, permanently put us in a secret place. Not just visit it, but turn a visitation to a home dwelling forever. A home going service. That's a better, that's a term I like. But it's not the home going that's in your head. This home going is where the Father in Jesus dwells, and we dwell with the Father in Jesus all in one. The secret place is something that was teased by Moses in Psalms 91. What Jesus did on Cal Calvary. Uh, yesterday Reverend George says it is finished and Reverend David Riley said the plea agreement watch this the plea agreement included you can have a seat in heavenly places that's the secret place now you're not good enough for the plea agreement that is what was given to you from the judge through your great lawyer who is Christ Jesus now the prosecutor is the devil because all he wants is death. All he wants is to expose your sin and talk about all the bad things you did and you don't deserve God's grace and mercy. But the plea deal, Pastor David, help me out. The plea deal was given by the father as judge, handed it over to the lawyer who was Jesus and gave it to us and said, here's the plea deal. Now you're going to have to die, but I'm going to take my lawyer clothes off and put on your clothes. So I'm going to take you with me to hell positionally. You're going to find us in Colossians. And I'm going to fulfill the plea deal. Now you have to sign your name on the plea deal. Because if you sign your name on the plea deal, I'm going to take you and me together. We're going to hell together. See, most understand, you went, to, you went with Jesus to hell. Colossians says we died with him. So you actually died for your own sins. <laughs> I went to Jesus to people's churches. They couldn't take it. But in the spirit of identification and positioning, I'm going to take you I just secretively to hell. So it's almost like every sin that you ever sin, every sin you plan to sin, every sin that you will sin, positionally you went to hell for it already. You went to jail for it. You went to prison for it. You was actually given capital punishment. And all that was given to the plea agreement. And when you put the faith in Christ, you sign the plea agreement. Now, once you sign the plea agreement, that means you are free. Now, I don't know anyone who gets a plea agreement and you are released from jail and then go back and live the same life. That means you're violating the plea agreement. Reverend David said something yesterday. He said, I'm here as an officer of the court and some of us are in violation of the plea agreement. <laughs> he said that, man. I think everybody's mouth fell to the floor. You're in violation of the plea agreement. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And then his dad came and talked about, I. Right, after the plea agreement, what you plan to do? You gotta find the jigsaw pieces. You gotta turn them over. It's about connecting and working with the people and dealing with broken vessels and flawed individuals. There's no perfect people. There's no sinless people, but there's people who sin less and less because we continue to work close to the presence of God and having a mind, proper mindset. And so, uh, man, it was amazing to watch God put this thing together. So as I was getting up this morning to go take care of some business today. It's about to rain and storm, so I'm going to be real busy today. Uh, and I thought it was so powerful. The Lord says, the secret place is mentioned in Psalms 91. And Jesus kind of spoke to me through the Holy Spirit and said, through this plea agreement, 
I'm going to take, I see, a, I see a truck that got Pratt on it, P-R-A-T-T. -T, and I lift up Dr. Janine Pratt and her husband and all the ministry. I pray may God take Dr. Janine Pratt and her husband to a higher place, a higher place in him. I speak to Dr. Janine Pratt. Dr. Janine Pratt, thank you for following through our instructions and letting God use you. May God increase you, Dr. Janine Pratt. Dr. Janine Pratt, her and your beautiful husband, I pray may God take you to a higher place in Jesus' name. That is a truck in front of me that got her last name on it, and I have to speak that. And the secret place, when you're in the secret place with God, God can whisper things, God can whisper things through you. And it's not a loud voice. It's almost like John who put his head on Jesus' breast, you know, and he kind of just heard the heartbeat of Jesus. He kind of heard that type of prayer that doesn't take words. You kind of hear it. It's an inside uh, koinonia. It's a closeness. And as I was getting dressed this morning to get ready to take care of some business today, the Lord spoke to me and says, the secret place in Psalms 91 is wrapped up in John chapter 14, verse 2. I go to prepare a place for you. And that place is a secret place. He says, and I'm preparing that for those who put their trust in me. That's your secret place. That's your plea agreement. Now, Jesus and I can offer you the secret place. I can offer you the plea agreement. But if you don't sign on to it, if you don't embrace it, then the plea agreement is not for you. I'm going to separate, watch this, the goats from the sheep. So there is a separation. There is those that will acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I need you, Jesus. And I'm going to sign my name on the plea agreement. And I want to honor that plea agreement by living my life in the spirit of thanksgiving and praise because all you put on the plea agreement. And part of the plea agreement is that I'm going to put you in a secret place. What's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret place? What's the secret place? What's the secret place? What's the secret place? God the Father, God the Sons, God, all the family members are going to go inside the Holy Spirit and live there forever. Here is the secret place. God the Father, God the Son, and God the sons and the daughters, which are still sons, really, we're making it sons and daughters, will be placed inside of the Holy Spirit forever. That's the secret place. That's bigger than the heaven that's in your head. Living inside of God and living inside of you throughout eternity with no chance of ever being separated throughout eternity. That is the secret place. And that's the place that Jesus goes to prepare for, for us. Now, to me, this is one of the greatest Saturdays of the year, which is also called the seventh, seventh day, which is a place of rest, which represents a place of completion. So this transitional day between Friday and Sunday is a time of where the father is working now the son did everything he's supposed to do to the point he says it is finished right and then in scripture says charette that he gave up the ghost right? he gave up the ghost which means that uh he completed up to the point of what he was supposed to do which means now the father have to take it from here let me tell you something. I'm telling you about the father. This is very, this is some things I learned in the secret place, right? If you do your part, and you do what God tell you to do, don't get in arguments with people, don't fuss with people, don't go back and forth with people. I'm telling you, listen to me, uh, Mr. B, I'm talking to someone named Mr. B because I keep your name off Facebook. Mr. B, don't go back and forth with people. I'm telling you, don't do it. Stay in the spirit realm and fight in the secret place and watch God deliver. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't, don't, don't get into it with your cousins and relatives. It's not worth it. You know, I'm telling you right now, you know, um, Pastor Marcus, I want to also celebrate you, man, because you're always there for Pastor McDuffie. I love you, man. You are one of the greatest uh, men I can ever know. God sent you into my life when you was 12 years old. And Pastor Marcus, you are really a true son, man. And I really appreciate you. 
you know, and I watch you grow, our, our bruises and our cuts, our own little secret fights behind the scene, but you always come out swinging for me. And I want to tell you, I'm proud of you, man. I can't even tell you where you're about to go in God, man. But watching you grow, it is the greatest thing in the world, man. To watch you get up to do praise and worship, you don't care if you're tired, you don't care. Man, to DJ throwback to you, it was an honor uh, to watch you do things for God and all the other stuff you have to do in terms of your own family, your growing ministry through Market D, the Tricky Trays, uh, the Mighty Kingdom Shaker ministry that's coming. And man, your, uh, your persona is worthy to be uh, honored. And I want to thank you for just always being there for me. I really appreciate you. Uh, isn't that right, Charette? I tell you, I just want to thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you, you know? You're dealing with the misconception of, of God, and the subtopic is the secret place. And I'm showing you that the real secret place is that God and us will dwell inside of the Holy Spirit throughout eternity. Here is the secret place. God and the body of Christ will dwell as one, and the Holy Spirit is our home throughout eternity. Watch how I put that. All right? That's the first thing. Now, the heaven that lands on the earth, we're going to live in the city of Jerusalem. That is true. But the real place to be is inside of God. And God is inside of us. And no longer will sin ever separate us. That's called the home. And this is like a little bit of a tease, okay, that Moses talks about in Psalms 91, which means there is a place called the secret that is available to all humans, but every human will not find it and won't pursue it because they don't want Jesus. They don't want Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you, Pastor Marcus. Really, I just really mean that, man. I tell you, I just, man, I was so happy yesterday. I was so happy. And I didn't even preach. I just shouted and danced. And me, Reverend Marcus, we took a chill pill, man. We didn't teach or preach. We just kept it going. And, um, and I really believed in what Pastor George said yesterday was so powerful. He said, that's not about the crowd. It's those little few people that was just in their position. Thank you, Sister Les. And I tell you, man, it was such a great feeling. And even those of you who tune in and watch, those of you, KOM, thank you, Sister Les, for watching. Thank you, President Crystal. Thank you for my team online. That was such a great thing that you guys stayed engaged and, and focused on ministry. It was so powerful. And uh, I want you to know that there's a secret thing going on between the online and in-house. And watching both of those worlds is another secret thing that takes place. When I got up this morning and I started thinking about, uh, uh, I started thinking about, you know, uh, what was going on on Saturday. We always talk about Friday. We always talk about Sunday. But I was saying, what's going on on Saturday? And I heard the father say to me in the secret, he says, I'm doing my work. See, there comes a time when the father is behind the scene doing his stuff and nobody knows what's going on publicly. And this is a principle that I believe that God wants to teach the church. When you've done all that God told you to do, step back and let God do the rest. Don't say no more. Don't say no less. Don't do not Just just stand. Now, just make sure you've done everything God told you to do and then just step back and let God do it. Remember, Kathy used to sing that song, Step Back, Let God Do It, Let the Father Do It. On Saturday and Sunday, that's the Father's responsibility because Jesus had done everything up to the point that, we, that he was supposed to do. And so, and this whole thing was, uh, I have to get to Calvary, I have to die, I have to shed my blood so that I could qualify uh, you uh, to get ready for the place and get the place get ready for you. I think Jesus did both. He did he did the Christ-like thing. He did the Jesus-like thing. He did the human thing. He did the God thing. He satisfied the claims of justice, that which is also a uh, judicial term. I'm going to settle uh, uh, the thing in court, and I'm going to also bring man into um, the holy of holies without any stain, without any stain, and spot, wrinkle, and we're going to go even higher than Moses because whatever Moses had, whatever John the Baptist had, uh, that's least in comparison to everybody that comes into the kingdom through Christ Jesus. And so, we don't just get a visitation; we get an eternal manifestation. That means I'm gonna I'm gonna hook this thing up so well that uh, man and God will never be separated if they honor the plea agreement. And so when you start to worship God and start to enjoy his presence, man, you feel a fire. You feel his presence. And what it does, it consumes devils. 
it shuts down drama. It shuts the voice of the enemy down. I'm telling you, man, you can tell storms to shut up. You can tell waters to go back into the sea. You can tell the boat we're going to the other side. And these are principles you have to do secretively. I'm telling you, man, these are things that work. Amen. Amen. I'm getting another text from somebody from another family. Yes, yeah, yeah, brother. That's right, man. He said, I have had so much peace in the last three days. God bless you, brother, man. I told you, don't go back and forth with people, man. Shut devils down and then just go forward. Watch God fight your battle. Now, here is the thing that's so powerful, right? And this is the thing I just was thought so powerful about the secret place is that Jesus says it is a house when it's me and my father, right? And I'm going to say the mother, the Holy Spirit. But it's not really a home until I positionally go after all my brothers and sisters. I need my brothers and sisters in the house so it becomes a home. So in the later part of the verse in John 14, go down a few verses, uh, he says, my father and I will come and make our abode with you. Make our abode with you. And so I'm not satisfied just with me and the Father and the Holy Spirit. I want to bring you to a place, a place, a place where we are so close that even physical words out loud does us an injustice. I want to be so close to you so that you will read my mind, pick up on my heartbeat, be in the spirit of Cornelia or communion. Thank you. Uh, so it is, it is so uh, of a blessing to watch, uh, glory be to God, uh, John chapter 14, and that's why it, it says in John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, word keep means obey, and my father will love him, and watch this, and we, and we, and we will come, notice we is pluralistic, not me, it's we. All right. Although they are one as God, they are separative in terms of manifestation. There's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Mother, the Holy Spirit, Paracletus, Paracletus. And inside of the Holy Spirit, because of the authority of Christ, he's going to go get all of mankind back and clean them off and make them sinless so we can dwell in the shelter or the secret place of the Most High. That's the place that it says here we will come and make which is, and we will come to him and make our abode with him the word abode is a b o d e which is make our home with him we're moving from our house to home so the secret place is our home dwelling our home dwelling inside the holy spirit romans 14 says the kingdom of god is not food nor drink it's not physical stuff the, our, the kingdom of god loretta morgan is uh righteousness peace and joy why is inside the holy spirit the holy spirit is the secret place i'm dwelling in him and he's dwelling in me oh if the church can only get a hold of the secret place don't you let anybody or anything separate you from the secret place of God. That's the place of his presence. Oh my God. That's the place where Minister Daniel opened up and talked about forgiveness. Oh my God. It's the place you hold no grudges. You hold no ill will. You just say, Lord God, you have forgiven me, so I extend forgiveness. Oh my God. That's that place that Pastor Daniel said yesterday, a place called paradise. Paradise is the third heaven. That's the place where all of our loved ones are. I really believe, thank you, Sister Les, I really believe that the secret place, oh my God, is paradise. It's in the presence of God. Glory be, oh, glory be to God. It is where God is seated, seat, is seated, and we're in him. We're next to him. And we're holding his hand. It's like my brother Jay on my father's shoulder. We're so close. There's no interruption. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Oh, my God. And it's so much of a joy. It's so much of a peace. Let me tell you when you know you're in God's presence. You got all peace and no joy and no strife. I'm telling you, you can feel it. It's like a cloud. It's, it's such a beautiful feeling. It reminds me of the scripture John 10 says, uh, uh, you have life, life more abundantly. So what's real life? Real life is learning to embrace all um, Yes, uh, the power and peace in the dwelling. That's good, good. And honor the sister Kersha, who was the wife of David, who helped Fem hold the camera, who did the, held the phone, and Kersha really appreciate you for holding it out. Kersha, 
you always do them little things in the background. God bless you, woman of God, wife to uh, Brother David. And I was going to honor you a little bit later in the broadcast, but I'll do it now that your husband mentioned your name. Thank you, Sister Kersha, for just being there. And I like that. that that's true. That's that thing she said, the power and peace and peace in the dwelling. Yes, Minister Danielle, it is an awesome feeling. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling to feel that scripture you talked about, about the forgiveness of God. And man, that forgiveness gives you that peace. It gives you that joy. It allows you to sleep at night. It allows you to have peace of mind. My God, man, what an abundance of peace of serenity when you know that your sins have been forgiven. Oh my God. Well, what a feeling, Pastor David Riley. What a feeling, Minister DJ. What a feeling, Sister Lance, to know that because of the blood of Jesus, all your sins are wiped away. Past, present, and future. That's a crazy thing. I know people say, well, Pastor Mike, you can't give people a license to sin. Well, you don't really need a license to sin. If you want to sin, you can sin. But here is the plea deal. I already freed you. But if you are dead to sin and you want to go back and live in it, you violate the plea agreement. That's what Brother David said. Powerful stuff. But when you are grateful for the secret place, you're going to go settle down in that secret place and you're going to enjoy God's presence. And then you're going to say stuff like this. Lord God, what do you want me to do? What can I do for you that you have given me all of this? What can I do? And God going to say, I need you to go show forth my praises. I need you to complete an assignment. I need you to get focused on your ministry and do what I ask you to do. I need you to put me first. I need you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The last thing was powerful even on the replay. Oh, God bless. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And I tell you, the powerful thing that I like, Sister Les, is that, you know, all seven of the speakers were encouraging each other. It's, man, there's a lot that goes on in speaking just being up front. And we like, sometimes we like the performance. Who did this? Who did that? It matters more after the seven last sayings and watching the people go downstairs, I mean, go down the hall and then eat soup together and commune and talk. And I was so proud of Minister Danielle because she got up there and I only gave her like two days notice, you know, and she came up there and you felt her heart forgiveness. Oh, what a thing. And then the six speakers behind her was encouraging her. And I said, oh, my God, I got God said there's more to learn from a service than just the speaking part. There's the music, there's the people, there's timing. There, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. And I'm telling you, man, it was uh, it was amazing. And then Linda was the eighth speaker. <laughs> Linda comes up and just <laughs> gives a word to all seven individuals, sums it all up, which I was planning on doing. And when I got on the floor, I looked at Linda. Our eyes connected, and the Lord says, I'm going to give you a secret. Hand the mic over to Linda. And I just sat down, and that was it. That was all God. That was it. I was done. And I'm telling you, man, that's a powerful thing, man. And God says, these are the things, 1 to 9, 17. These are the things I want to reveal to the body of Christ if they're sitting in my presence. I want them to appreciate the secret place. Boy, there's a song that uh, Brother Eric played last night. I had not heard it in a while. And we're going to be playing it probably tomorrow. I'll be playing it all. Two songs will be playing all day today. And, uh, you know, I tell you, it has been uh, such an awesome experience of these last three days. And just the presence and the spirit of God, you know, and, uh, you know, the place, which is the secret place, uh, sung by Desmond Pringle, who sings with Shekinah Glory. And we used to sing that song and on Tuesday nights in that Mighty Sister God Church. And every time that song is played, we've been laid out on the floor. And I'm going to be playing that and also another praise song I've been singing, oh, man, the last 24 hours. And I tell you, man. It is an awesome thing. Danielle set the atmosphere for us all. She spoke from her heart and allowed God to move. That's right. There you go, Charette. Powerful stuff, man. Powerful stuff. So right now we're in Saturday. That means there's a transitional day and God is working his stuff because on Sunday morning, God pulls Jesus out the grave and Jesus has a glorified body. And then he goes back to the third heaven to add what he did to the earth, to his original glory. And you get a whole nother type of being sitting on the right hand of the father. And uh, I'm telling you, the secret is, here's the secret. Find that place in God and don't come out of it. Don't let anybody pull you out of it. Don't let life pull you out of it. Listen to me, Brother D. I'm talking to a brother named Brother D. 
Don't come out the secret place. Stay in the secret place. Stay in his presence. Cut off anything that will take you out of the presence of the Most High and stay right there. And then let God fight your battles. Just step back and let God fight your battles. I'm telling you, this is the instructions for today. The misconception is that we're trying to get to heaven. The conception is heaven is trying to get into us. And the presence of God is on us when we realize we are one with God through Christ Jesus. And I really believe we really got to really sit down and really understand uh, a thirst for his presence. Minister Jay said something. He was thirsting for it to go back to the presence of the Father. And then I read something in Matthew chapter 25. It says that Jesus showed up and he says, I was hungry and you fed me, right? Uh, I was thirsty. Did you give me water? Thirst also means I wanted something from you. I want your obedience. I want your uh, holiness. I want you to chase after me. I want to become number one in your life. Not people, not stuff, not money. I want you to thirst after me. If I'm thirsty, give me the water of your obedience. If I'm thirsty, come after me. That's what Jesus was talking about. I thirst I thirst, and when you thirst for God, oh my God, what a feeling. And you know you can't really live without water between five to 10 days, and some folks go on special water fast longer than that, but really your body needs some type of liquid. And what Jesus is saying, I thirst for a body of Christ that will dwell in the secret place of the most high God. My God, I'm telling you, man, after watching crazy stuff in New York and and bombs and shooting and stuff going on in Ukraine and the spirit of sickness and disease. Psalms 91 really is going to really be broken down to us. You know, uh, let me close out with this. And as I was driving up the road this morning, uh, crossing over uh, a certain street, uh, traffic was being held up because a deer was walking across the road and I had to slow down. And the deer was right in front of my car just this morning. And the Lord gave me Psalms 42. It talks about as a deer panted for the water, my soul chased after thee. And I thought about when Jamie says, I thirst. And those individuals who are like a deer that thirst after the presence of God, God going to fill you. He's going to fill you with healing. He's going to fill you, man. He's going to fill you with his prayer. He's going to fill you where you'd be like, hey, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. I'm telling you, man, what a feeling to be in the shelter or the secret place of the most high God. And if it's a secret, that means everybody don't know it, everybody don't hear it, and everybody don't understand it. But if you watch this broadcast and you listen to what we teach and preach, I'm giving you every tool you need to dwell in the secret place of the most high. God, you don't even need weed for this. This is the high that's in Christ. Hallelujah. Your mind, your soul, your emotional man is just set on Christ. God, I give you worship for the secret place. Oh, slow down and let God do what he will. That's good, Sister Linda. I just feel led to pray in a few minutes. Lord God, thank you for everybody watching. I thank you for the secret place of the most high God. Breathe on my people. Breathe on KOM. Breathe on all my leaders. God, thank you that we're right now on Saturday, in between Friday and Sunday, where there's the secret place of the Most High God. Let your oil and your presence run on our minds, our emotional man. I thank you for those who are watching in the secret behind the scenes and don't want anybody to know they're watching me on Facebook Live. Breathe on these families. Breathe on these four families that's been under much stress in the last seven days. Breathe on that man. Breathe on that brother who's been struggling. Breathe on the man of God. <sighs> Receive the presence of the Holy Spirit as Jesus breathed on them inside the room. Every time Jesus showed up in rooms, things were going on secretively. Look at the word room, room, room. Lord God, let us dwell inside the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwell inside of us. Let us slow down today and embrace what Jesus did at Calvary. Father God, it's your show. Finish doing your work. We've done all that we can do. Now, Father God, do you today. Do you, Father. And then on Sunday morning, we thank of a resurrection power and miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Those that can on Saturday morning go and plant your seed. Dollar sign past Michael 7. PayPal address supermike777 at gmail.com. Pastor Michael D. McDuffie. 
Sunshine is the website. Let's go and do what we got to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Les. Thank you, Mr. Danielle. Thank you, Sister Linda. Thank you, Reverend and Pastor David Riley. Thank you, Loretta Morgan. Thank you for all of you continuing to just show up and show out and show off. Pastor Marcus. Amen. All those from Seven Last Words. Eric, Eric Edlin, Robert. God bless you. Uh, Linda Shane, of course, David Ray, David, David, and Daniel, Daryl Jacobs, Jelly Roll, glory be to God. Thank you, Charette, of course. And all of you, Reverend Dr. Janine Pratt and your husband, who I've been uh, speaking over right now as I saw the thing in, in front of me today. I just thank the presence of a living God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for the post. Appreciate all of you. Gotta go.